I've got a little sign-up list if any of you want any of our info. We will never give your info out to other groups. That's a restriction we have. So, But if you want, we have a, a weekly email that goes out that summarizes what's happening. And uh, we send you a voter's guide during the election that doesn't tell you who to vote for. It just gives you information on everybody. Um, make sure you sign up on the list because one of the things I'm going to ask you to do here at the end is we really need prayer. And you can't pray for us if you don't know what's going on. And so, like, I'd like you to be praying for the attorneys who are in the Fifth Circuit in two weeks for us arguing this case. Uh, they need prayer cover. Um, let me end. With, I could talk about a lot of other cases, but I want to I end up and then allow you to, to ask questions. I'll end with one case. Some of you probably heard about this case because it's five years old now or four years old. But I just think it is such an important example of our country in Texas that I, I want to tell you about it if you hadn't heard about it. Uh, about four and a half years ago, I was minding my own business, reading my newspaper at lunch when I saw something I have never seen. Uh, it was a picture of senior citizens holding picket signs. And I thought, well, what in the world is going on here? And I looked down and I found out it was, it was a bunch of senior citizens who had been told by the city that they could not uh, sing gospel songs in their piano at, in their senior center or pray over their meals in their senior center. And one of them was a pastor, a former pastor, and once a week they would sit at one of the, one of the cafeteria tables and they would talk, they would do a little Bible study. And that was banned too. And so they went out and they protested. And I, I went and I went back to the office and I had a, we had a new attorney uh, who's still with us. He, he was fresh out of the military, young, kind of aggressive. And I put this newspaper down on his desk and I said, go find these people. And let's see if we can help them. And he took off. And uh, he came back to me and he said, you know, I got there. And they said, uh, we're the has-beens, we're the nobodies in this town. There's four people in the city council that control everything. Uh, but we just had to say something. We never thought anybody would help us, much less lawyers, for free. And uh, they said, but, you know, we're going to do something. So my young attorney comes back and he says to me, okay, the city doesn't deserve to be warned. They deserve to be destroyed. And I'm like, no, no, we're a Christian group. You know, we're going <laughs> to send them a letter. And, you know, and so I said, well, we sent them a letter. And it said, you know, there's this thing, the Constitution. You really ought to read it. Um, and uh, here's some cases and, and basically said, look, you know, just get this corrected. And I said, you know, if the Lord wants them to fight us, then they'll fight us. Uh, but we'll leave that in the Lord's hands. So we sent it and they basically said, get lost. In fact, their statement in the newspaper was, religion is not allowed in a public building. And that was their, that was their statement. Um, so we held a press conference and I had all the seniors behind me and I did something and I'm sure every media consultant would tell you never to do. Uh, I turned around at the end and I said, does anybody want to say anything? <laughs> and uh, Barney Clark, who was down at the end, Barney had a cowboy hat, one suit, the only suit he owned was a western suit with a bolo tie, cowboy boots. He walked up to the microphone and he said, I fought in World War II for these freedoms. And I ain't going to the corner to pray. If they want to arrest me, fine long as it says what I was arrested for, arrested for praying. Turns around and walks back and back and around. <laughs> and uh, about an hour later, we, an hour later, we got a call from Bill O'Reilly's producer saying, we want the guy in the hat. <laughs> so that started Barney and my whirlwind tour. And uh, he ended up testifying in the U.S. Senate, um, brought the place down. Uh, and uh, actually, it was, I found out afterwards that was his first plane ride. He had been in the Navy, and he'd never, you know, he'd, but he'd never been in a plane. And uh, anyway, but we, Fox News came out, and they, they went out to the senior center, and they, they ran into Marceline Green, who's about four foot two, gray hair, you know, white hair, bent over, and she said, come here. And uh, I went, oh no, what's she going to do now? And this cameraman's followed her, and she pops open her trunk, and she pulls out a picket sign, and it says, don't mess with Grandma, she's mad. And, uh, I turned to my media director, and I said, I think that's going to make the cut tonight. Sure that that was the start of the Fox News channel for the night. Um, but these are great people, and at the end, we not only got a, an injunction um, against the uh, city, that they can never interfere with these seniors again when they pray over their meals or sing their gospel songs or anything else. 
but we uh, we even got some money for them, just a little bit, so they could hold a celebration party. Uh, and uh, they held a celebration party in the senior center. But my favorite thing was after the case was over, um, everybody in the city was watching these so-called powerless people. And when they saw that they beat the four people on the city council, the whole city held a recall election and they threw out the four guys on the city council. <laughs> about a year and a half later I had a call from one of the seniors who was now one of the new city council members. <laughs> so I just love it because to me this is America and this is Texas that there's a lot of bad stuff that goes on but if we're willing to actually do something we can change it and uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of us I mean those seniors there I think we only had eight or nine or ten or eleven clients well, they turned the whole city upside down uh, the so-called powerless people in their city. Uh, so I, I would just encourage you, you know, and I would tell you, we need you. We need you to be praying for these cases and these situations that we're talking about. Um, we need you to spread the word about what's going on. Uh, I mean, I love the fact that this little video that I showed you, just by word of mouth, has gone to be one of the top-rated videos now on the Internet. Um, a mil over a million people. I got a call yesterday from uh, Washington Post and the day before from ABC National News. Why? Because that video is making the rounds. And, and they want to cover the story now. They want to go out and talk to Wanda and Henry. And uh, so word of mouth is really powerful to let people know about what's going on if we're really going to stand for our freedoms. Um, and I, I would encourage you, especially those of you who are pastors, um, Boy, well, there's a real need for believers. There's a lot of Christians who leave church and don't understand that their, their biblical worldview is supposed to be applied when they leave church. It's supposed to be applied to not only how their dads and moms, but how they vote, how they're involved with their government, you know, how they're involved in their science class or whatever else. And uh, I'll tell you, I was telling Kent this, and I'll try to get him the information on this. But Focus on the Family, if you haven't ever seen it, has a, just an absolutely fabulous series that a lot of churches go through called uh, The Truth Project. And it just trains Christians how to apply their worldview to every area of life. Um, but we really need that. We really need people who go out into the world and are the best lawyers and doctors and media directors and everything else because they bring their faith with them and they don't leave it when they get to work. Um, you know, a lot of times, sometimes as, as parents, we encourage our kids to say, well, don't go into that area, it's really dark. Well, that's exactly where those who know the Lord need to go to take the life. So we need missionaries in every one of these fields that know how to apply the Word of God uh, to those fields. Um, but I want to end, and I'm going to show you uh, this, as you heard. I, I just think this is such a picture. I mean, this is what they did to the Mojave Desert Cross by order of the court after the decision came down. we got to cover that cross while it's on appeal. And you can see that it's a cross. You can see the outline, but you can see it's a bag. And I just think every church should show this picture and say, you want to know a picture of what is being attempted in our country? This is it right here. Well, it's not going to work. We know spiritually it's not going to work. But it shows us the battle, that we've got to, we've got to be willing to untie the strings and uh, take the bag off. Um, and so one of the things my uh, grassroots director asked me to promise to do, if they'll flip to the second slide, I wanted to provide you this. A couple of things you can do is we just started a whole grassroots effort across Texas. And the first step was, before we could move at all, was to establish a prayer network team. And so some of you might say, well, you know, I can't do a lot of other stuff, but one of the things I can do is to commit to prayer on a regular basis. And we have a specific prayer team. And so her, her number's at the bottom of this thing back here if you want to call her or email her. Um, but she'd love to add to our prayer team. And then the other thing we're doing now that we have sort of prayer starting in place as the foundation is we're doing training workshops around the state on how does the government work? How can you get involved? How can you run for just a local office if you want to as a believer and start making a difference and working up the chain? How does all this work? Uh, I'll tell you, it's really encouraging to see what we're seeing. We showed up at Tyler for the first one, and uh, we did this with another group called American Majority, and there were over 130 people at that first training workshop. 
Um, and it's the same thing is happening. We were just in San Antonio last weekend and all that.